We've had a, a week of resurrection stories from the Gospels of John, Matthew, and Luke. So today it's only fitting that uh, Mark gets a look in. His Gospel ends with today's reading, a list of appearances of the risen Christ. First to Mary Magdalene, who used to be a very troubled woman, near his tomb. Then to two of the disciples out for a walk in the country, and finally to the 11 apostles sitting at table. Books have been written about the table ministry of Jesus. And of course, it was around a table that the Last Supper took place. Long before there were churches, the followers of the risen Jesus gathered in each other's homes and celebrated his nourishing presence in the bread and wine on the table. And only later, after churches were built, did altars appear. Let's never forget that the altar, too, is a table. Not an empty table, but one from which the risen Christ continues to nourish us. And each Mass tells that story over and over again. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this bread, all of you, and eat it. This bread is my body for the life of the world. Have, have you or I ever had an experience of the risen Christ when we were uh, troubled like Mary Magdalene? Or have we felt a, his presence on a walk like the two disciples? Or are we struck by the fact that he feeds us in Holy Communion. Take those two words, Holy Communion. When people are in Holy Communion, they are in close contact with each other. Something deeply personal is going on between them. They feel each other's presence. They mean something to each other. They bond together. They are really present one to the other. I think about those two words, really present. And I think back to when I was a teacher taking a roll call at the beginning of a class. Call a name, get an answer. Call and response. Sometimes call and no response. Oh, that person is absent today. Mm, well, maybe, maybe not. No response could mean he or she is there, but not paying attention. He's in the room, but not present. And she might as well be absent. Real presence, then, paying attention to one another and to what's going on. And then Easter week ends with Jesus commissioning the eleven to go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The good news, the God spell, the gospel to the whole creation, not just to their own people, but to all people. And then at the end of Easter week, I look back and think how this particular Easter has been a difficult one for Catholics. Priests and bishops and Pope are making the headlines for all the wrong reasons. Never in our lifetime has there been such a, a comeuppance 
for our one true church, the high and mighty self-important organization, very often with a superiority complex. But then I remember Easter began when everything seemed lost. Then it was shattered dreams and the loss of a beloved leader. Now it's priests and bishops and maybe Pope who have let us down. Some ways of doing things in our church must be put to death so that new ways can rise from the dead. Let's all become, no matter what our role is, let's all become, in the words of the first reading, companions of Jesus. People who sit around a table with him, share a meal with him, enjoy his real presence, and live truthful lives. For all who are mourning the death of someone, that Easter may strengthen their faith in the resurrection of the dead, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who enable others to walk, parents of young children, physiotherapists, those who care for the elderly, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all in rehab of one kind or another, for the handicapped and brokenhearted, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for those who have requested our intentions, our prayers, and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Jesus, risen from the dead, walk with us now and always. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our offering of Eucharist today may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord, give us joy by these Easter mysteries. Let the continuous offering of this sacrifice by which we are renewed bring us to eternal happiness with Christ, our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and the Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever on this Easter day when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. 